What's up guys? So quick video for you. If you're looking at this video, you probably want to know how to upgrade your 3D printer that doesn't have a heated print bed to having one with a heated print bed like I've done on my Anycubic Mega Zero. They have a new version of this printer out actually. Uh, it does come with a heated print bed now for a slightly increase in price. In my opinion, definitely opt for a printer with a heated print bed. If you're printing PLA, you don't have to have a heated print bed. But it is nice because you can get warping. Um, I've had problems when I print larger footprint items with warping. So I decided to add a heated print bed to this. So let's get into it. So with what I've done on this printer, it's not specific to the Mega Zero. You can do it with any 3D printer with a little bit of tinkering and ingenuity. But it's not that hard. So I'll just tell you how I did it. So to retrofit your printer with a heated print bed, you will need a heated print bed. This plate here, I got off Amazon. I actually got it on sale for like $13. I think they're normally anywhere from $20 to $30. Really inexpensive. This is like a, a 220 by 220. This is one of the key components you need. And besides that, you need what this janky looking box I have over here. I might 3D print a box for this, but what's in this is an industrial controller. And this industrial controller is the uh, Burmi there's a few different types out there. These industrial controllers are really common. You can find them on Amazon or eBay now. And what they do is they're a PID controller. If you don't know what a PID controller is, look that up. Basically, I think it stands for proportional integral. Uh, I forget what the D stands for. All you need to know is you need a controller like this as a temperature controller. They're very accurate. People use them for brewing, maybe like incubators, stuff like that. Then you will also need a power supply, a 12 volt power supply to power both the controller and the printer. I did forget to mention you also need a solid state relay that works in conjunction with the PID controller. Now, how does all this tie together? Well, first thing is, luckily for me, my printer on the Anycubic Mega Zero has an aluminum print bed. So what I did was I drilled holes in the print bed and be careful while doing this, you do not want to warp this because then it won't be level. I added some aluminum standoffs that I machined. You can pick up standoffs on Amazon um, or on AliExpress. Mine are about an inch tall. Uh, you could probably make, I probably could have made them a little bit lower. But anyways, you can buy brass ones on Amazon. And then I just put the standoffs onto the, onto the existing print bed, raised it up, put the print bed on top of this, this heated print bed, which is basically uh, an aluminum PCB with heat element in it. And then I attached it with some bolts. Now, before I did all that, on the opposite side of this, there's a hole for a thermosistor, which comes with this unit. I took off the protective casing around the thermosistor because they're used for screwing into whatever your applications should be, say for brewing, it might be like a lid or a pot or something. I don't know. I removed that protective screw because we want the full sensitivity of that thermosistor on this bed. So I put it in that hole. I taped it down with some Kapton tape. To this print bed, there are leads. Some come soldered. Uh, I had to solder on a positive and a negative to it. And then I just taped everything down with capped on tape, ran it behind the printer, and used some wire sheafing to make it look all nice and tidy and to keep it from catching and kinking. I attached it to the existing cabling of the printer, ensuring that it moves without any fetching. So very important. Back here, you see there's no fetching at all. So, how does the controller unit work? Look up videos on how to wire these up. I actually might have created a video actually on my channel on how to use this because I had this controller already. I was using it to control um, a barbecue, a fan on a barbecue to blow air in and help control the temperature. But anyways, so to this system is a solid state relay that basically when this, set when this hits a set temperature, so in my case here, I have my set value on the bottom as 60. So my print bed should go up to 60. And my um, top value right now, as you can see, it's increasing slowly as I talk. This controls the solid state relay because a relay allows you to control, um, allows you to use a little bit of current, a small amount of current to control a larger amount of current. Very simple, it just switches on and off. 
What makes this controller interesting is as it gets close to your set value, it will start cycling on and off depending on the acceleration of how fast or slow your print bed is heating up. So that's what makes this uh, controller intelligent. Instead of just heating all the way up to 60 and then shutting off, it, it knows that it's ramping up and it starts slowing down before it gets to that value so it doesn't overshoot. So that's what makes these controllers so uh, intelligent. So back to the solid state relay. So basically it's like a mechanical relay. If you know anything about those, it's just a switch on and off. Very similar in this, except for it's solid state. You can look up how they work. I don't really quite know. There's two types though. There's an AC version and a DC version. Be sure to get the DC version if your print bed runs on DC. The amount of amps this pulls, by the way, is not that high. I will meter this and show you guys here in a second. As you can see, the temperature is rising slowly and is getting warm. I also double checked all this with a laser thermometer and a regular thermometer and totally this works perfect. There we go. It is holding steady at 60. Beautiful. As you can see here, the heated print bed is pulling around 10 amps, but I think that is also the max amps that my power supply can provide. As the temperature reaches the set point, you can see the unit starts cycling to maintain a very accurate temperature. So wiring this all together is very simple. I put a toggle switch on to control both units. All that happens is the relay is hooked up to the power supply, which is then hooked up to the print bed. Your negative is hooked directly to the power supply. Positive lead obviously is hooked up to your solid state relay. So definitely go by the instructions that come with your solid state relay or your industrial controller. This is just to show you guys how I did it. Um, this is not an exact way of doing it, but I will post links to all of these um, parts in the description below, just in case so you guys can get an idea of what to look for. Here are two additional options for temperature controllers that are easy to wire. I'll provide links below. Other than that, just some wiring, odds and ends, bits and bobs, um, switch so I can control the whole thing, I already mentioned that. Yeah, there's not much else to it. Make a nice looking box. You can see that the relay here now is starting to blink as it's getting close to the set value. I originally had hooked up an LED light strip here, but it was too bright and annoying. So um, I could have that come on and off. So just to tell me if, the, if there is current going through the system. And as you can see here, the light is blinking and we're getting close to our set value now. And the, bread, the bed is indeed 60, but not over 60. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, the other thing is you must remember if you've increased the height of the print bed, you will need to raise your end switch for the print bed because it's not going to know that you added a print bed. So it'll try to go all the way down until it hits the end switch, which will cause damage to, well, the print bed or your hot end. Very, very important. Remember to do that. Now, I will warn you that don't leave this unattended because there's no software to prevent thermal runaway. I did do some testing. If the thermosistor becomes detached or if there's an issue, this goes into a fail safe that it shuts off the solid state relay so that no current keeps going through and keeps heating up the print bed to an unsafe temperature. However, it doesn't check for any other faults. So if you have a short or something or something weird going on in your wiring, just be aware that there could be a potential for a fire hazard. So don't leave this unattended. Don't start a print and go away. This, you should never do that with any 3D printer, but there's no thermal runaway protection with this system. It's very, I'll say very rudimentary. But if you wanna add a heated print bed to your printer without mucking around with the firmware on the printer itself, this is definitely a very low cost and easy solution to do. Yeah, that's it. As you can see, as I've been talking, it now we've hit the, the um, set value of 60. And yeah, it's holding steady. You can see here that the red light is just blinking on and off very slowly just to maintain that temperature. The other thing I might do is I might add a fan onto this power supply but it's only lukewarm right now, so I don't even think I need to do that. But I might add one here just to kind of keep things nice and cool. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So far, I'm really liking the AnyCubic Mega Zero. 
The only thing that was lacking with this was a heated print bed. Other than that, the prints on this printer have been coming out awesome. I have hopefully a really interesting project coming up, surf related for you guys that follow me for surfing um, in the coming year, hopefully. We'll see what happens. But it's not another 3D printed surfboard, but it's something surfing related. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give this video a thumbs up so that other people can hopefully find this video if they wanna add a heated print bed to their 3D printer. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.